I should like to discuss with you some aspects of the American dream. For in a real sense, America is essentially a dream. A dream as yet unfulfilled. It is a dream of a land where men of all races and of all nationalities and of all creeds can live together as brothers. The substance of this dream is expressed in these sublime words lifted to cosmic proportions. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is the dream. One of the first things we notice about this dream is an amazing universalism. For it does not say some men, but it says all men. It does not say all white men, but it says all men, which includes black men. It does not say all Gentiles, but it says all men, which includes Jews. It does not say all Protestants, but it says all men, which includes Catholics. And there's another thing that we notice in this dream that ultimately distinguishes our form of democracy and government from all of the other totalitarian regimes that emerge in history. It says that each individual has certain basic rights that are neither conferred by nor derived from the state. To discover where they came from, it is necessary to move back behind the dimmest of eternity, for they are God-given. Very seldom, if ever, in the history of the world has a socio-political document expressed in such profoundly eloquent and unequivocal language the dignity and worth of the human personality. The American dream reminds us that every man is an heir to the legacy of worthiness. And ever since the founding fathers of our nation dreamed this noble dream, America has been something of a schizophrenic personality, tragically divided against herself. On the one hand, we have proudly professed the principles of democracy. And on the other hand, we have sadly practiced the very antithesis of those principles. Indeed, slavery and segregation are strange paradoxes in the nation founded on the principle that all men are created equal. And this is what the Swedish sociologist Gunnar Mardal referred to as the American dilemma. That the shape of the world today does not permit us the luxury of an anemic democracy. The price America must pay for the continued exploitation of the Negro and other minority groups is the price of its own destruction. The hour is late. The clock of destiny is ticking out. It is trite but urgently true that if America is to remain a first-class nation, she can no longer have second-class citizens. Now more than ever before, America is challenged to bring her noble dream into reality. And those who are working to implement the American dream are the true saviors of democracy. And every academic discipline has its technical nomenclature. Modern child psychology has a word that is used probably more than any other it is the word maladjusted. And this is the ringing cry of modern child psychology. And certainly all of us want to live a well-adjusted life in order to avoid the neurotic personality. 
But there are certain things within our social order to which I am proud to be maladjusted and to which I call upon all men of goodwill to be maladjusted. And if you allow the preacher and me to come out now, let me say to you that I never did intend to adjust myself to the evils of segregation and discrimination. I never did intend to adjust myself to religious bigotry. I never did intend to adjust myself to economic conditions that would take the necessities from the masses in order to give luxuries to the few. I never did intend to adjust myself to the madness of militarism and the self-defeating effects of physical violence. And I call upon all men of goodwill to be maladjusted because it may well be that the salvation of our world lies in the hands of the maladjusted. So let us be maladjusted, as maladjusted as the prophet Amos, who in the midst of the injustices of his day, could cry out in the words that echoes across the centuries, let justice run down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Let us be maladjusted, as maladjusted as Abraham Lincoln, who had the vision to see that this nation could not exist half slave and half free. Let us be maladjusted. As maladjusted as Jesus of Nazareth, who could look into the eyes of the men and women of his generation and cry out, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. And I believe it's through such maladjustment that we will be able to emerge from the bleak and desolate midnight a man's inhumanity to man into the bright and glittering daybreak of freedom and justice. And that will be the day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing with the Negro in the spiritual of old. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last.